in this session we shall be discussing how a transversal or a line can cut or divide a two dimensional figure into many parts now when i say many parts i am basically referring to many pieces or many parts and the two dimensional figures that we are going to talk about here would be triangles and quadrilaterals we can talk about other figures as well but the point here is to understand how to make the minimum number of cuts or the maximum number of cuts to get minimum number of pieces or to get maximum number of pieces and by the end of this session we will see whether we can arrive to a formula regarding the same or not now in the very first case we would so let's say that we would divide this discussion into two cases when we, when i'm referring to the left uh, so let's say from your side so when i'm referring to this the 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 box in which i'm writing so we are taking the first case wherein we will be making the lines or the cuts parallel to the sides so i am taking triangles here so let's say i'll make four different triangles now the nature of the triangle does not make any difference the point that we are trying to make here is let us understand whether i take a scalene triangle or a right angled triangle or an isosceles triangle or an equilateral triangle does not make any difference as far as this discussion is concerned so let me start off with the first triangle in which i am taking a line or i am making a cut parallel to one of the sides and i have made only one cut in the second triangle i am making two cuts or i am drawing two transversals or line parallel to the the second side and in the third case i am making let's say three cuts okay let me do it in such a way so that the cuts or the lines that i am drawing appear to be parallel to the third side okay now the third side here is the one that i am referring to now in the fourth case uh i can make uh, let us say i this is just a repetition so in this case what i am doing is i am increasing the number of lines the number of cuts just to understand how many parts or pieces would it result into so in the first case in the first triangle this triangle i'm talking about we are going from left to right from my side so now if i say cx refers to the number of cuts that i'm making so in the first case i have made how many cuts i have made only one cut in the second case i have made two cuts in the third case i have made three cuts and in the fourth case i have made four cuts and let p here symbolize the number of parts or the number of pieces in which the two dimensional figure is getting divided into so in the first case you will see that this is the first part or the first piece you can say and this is the second piece now we are not interested in the uh, in the type of the piece for example i can say the first piece here is a triangle and the second piece here could be a trapezium we are not interested in that we are just interested in understanding the number of cuts vis-a-vis -vis the number of pieces would that would be given rise to after the transversal or a line or a cut is made on that two dimensional figure so here the number of pieces or the number of parts would be 2 here the number of pieces you can count here are 1 2 and 3 in this case you can count the number of cuts are 3 so 1 2 3 and 4 in this case the number of cuts are 5 4 uh, so the number of pieces that you are going to get here are 1 2 3 4 and 5 so we get some idea from here and the idea is the number of pieces 
would be equal to the number of cuts that I'm making plus one. Now let me take a second case here. Now the second case here is I am taking a square or a rectangle. Though I am drawing a square, but since this is a free hand drawing, uh, please bear with me. It may look like a rectangle as well. But the cases that I am taking here are, I am taking a square. Now the remaining two cases that I intend to take here are maybe a rhombus. So as said, this is a freehand sketch. So the first two cases that I have taken are the cases of squares. The remaining two cases that I have taken are the cases of a rhombus. In the first case, I am drawing a line parallel to one of, or let's say two sides of the square. And I'm basically referring to these sides, the lateral sides. In the second case, I am making So let us say in the second case, I have made two cuts and these two cuts are parallel to one of the sides. Now when I'm taking the cases of a rhombus, what I'm doing here is, These are the two lines that I have drawn and I have made it parallel, parallel to one of the sides. And let us say in the fourth case, I am making only one cut which is parallel to one of the sides. Or let's say these two sides. I hope we are aware of the properties of rhombus. A rhombus has. So if I'm not talking about a kite, even kite is a rhombus, the figure here looks like a kite. So even if I'm talking about a kite, uh, the rhombus either has all the four sides equal or there are two sides which are parallel to each other are the equal sides. Now, let me do the same thing as I had done earlier. So the number of cuts that I made here in the first case. So I made three cuts here. I have made two cuts here. Again, I have made two cuts in the rhombus as well. And in the last rhombus that I have taken, I have made only one cut. Now, let me see how many parts or pieces uh, do we get here. So, the number of pieces that I get in the very first case are 1, 2, 3, 4, in the second case, how many pieces do we get here? One, two, three. In the third case, we get again three pieces. And in the fourth case, we get two pieces here. So the formula that we had derived for the number of cuts being made in a single direction was absolutely correct. Now, X here refers to the direction maybe x axis y axis or z axis so if you are making a cut which is parallel to z axis let us say this is the case of a rhombus in which i say that this is the z axis i'm making cuts parallel to z axis which in this case becomes parallel to one of the sides so in that case i can symbolize or i can represent the number of pieces as cz plus one okay now let me move further and let me take a third case here. Now what is the third case that I'm going to take here? So irrespective of the figures, the best thing here is to take a square. And what I'm going to do here is I have taken one transversal parallel to one of the sides and I've taken another transversal parallel to the other two sides. 
Now this case becomes different from the first two cases because in the first two cases we had talked about various figures and we were talking about the cuts being made in a single direction. Now in this third case we are talking about the cuts being made in both the directions and please keep in mind that when we are making the cuts we will ensure that we are making the cuts by drawing lines parallel to the sides right okay let me take one more case here so let us say now i am making three cuts let us say on a side which is parallel to y axis i'm sorry x axis and then i'm making two cuts on a line or a line which is parallel to the remaining the third side the remaining two sides and here the remaining two sides are just understand that i'm making a double arrow here on the sides just to symbolize and incidentally these two sides are parallel to the y-axis now let me count the number of cuts first and then count the number of pieces so in the first case the number of cuts that i have made in both the directions the total number of cuts i am referring to are two so will it be correct if i say cx only no so let me rewrite this as now i am making two cuts but both the cuts are being made in a different direction so let me symbolize this thing by cx plus cy as you would have seen that i have already written the cases here the cuts could be either uh, made uh, parallel to the sides or parallel to the x y axis x z axis or y and z axis so in the first case the total number of cuts are 2 and in the second case the total number of cuts are 3 plus 2 which means 5 cuts so here also instead of writing it as 2 let me write it as 1 plus 1 just to symbolize that one cut was made in one direction and the other cut was made in a direction which was perpendicular to the other direction please mark the words that i'm using here now in the first case one two three four we get four pieces in the second case we get how many pieces one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve now please understand this 12 if i factorize this into two factors this can be written as a product of two factors as 4 into 3 and when i say the number of pieces were 4 here this 4 can be written as 2 into 2 i am not talking about any other forms because there is a formula that we are going to derive so the total number of pieces will be given by a small formula and the small formula here is cx plus 1 into let's say cy plus 1 where c refers to the number of cuts being made in one direction which is the x direction x axis and cy refers to a cut being made in the other direction and the third thing that we have assumed here is both the cuts are being made either i mean in this case when, when we are talking about both the cuts are being made uh, in in two different directions which are perpendicular to each other so these are the things that we have assumed here okay now last but not the least so just to go the other way around the other way around here is let us say somebody tells me that there are five pieces that i have got after i had cut a two dimensional figure let's say i cut a square and i got five pieces so the next question which arises here is 
what are the total number of cuts that you would have made so let me just go do it uh, in the reverse uh, or with the reverse logic so let me see say that these are two cuts that i'm making cx and cy so 5 can be written as 0 plus 5 this can be written as 1 plus 4 this can also be written as okay now when i'm doing this i should understand that i do not need to break the number of pieces few minutes back when we talked about the pieces that you were getting were, were one more than the number of cuts that we were getting so when you are trying to see what are the total number of cuts that you could have made to give five pieces so naturally you need to take the figure as four the total number of cuts i hope you are understanding what i'm saying the next that you can do here is two plus two and then three plus one and four plus zero which essentially does not make any difference as far as the total number of cases are concerned so we can neglect some cases here I mean, though I can write down 4 plus 0 as well. Okay. Now, once you have done this, let us see the how many cases are we supposed to consider here. 1, 2 and 3. But in all these 3 cases, now let me do this question independently. Somebody told me that there are 4 cuts which have been made in either of the directions. What are the total number of pieces that I would have got in the first case? So in the first case, I would have got the total number of pieces using the formula. 0 plus 1 is 1 and 4 plus 1 is 5. So I would have got 5 pieces. In the second case, how many pieces am I going to get? 1 plus 1, 2. 2 into 4. We would get 8 pieces. And in the last case, we would get 3 into 3. So now if somebody would have told me that the question originally was there are five cuts which have been made or a square has been divided into five parts. The basic question was the square has been divided into five parts. So what are the cuts that would have been made which has which has given rise to five parts. So the answer is very obvious. Definitely four cuts would have been made and those four cuts would have been made in a single direction. Right now, if the question would have been given the other way around, there are four cuts made in a on a two dimensional square. What are the total number of pieces that you can get out of this exercise? And the best way to understand this is, let us say there is a two dimensional birth, birthday cake that has been given to you, wherein you are neglecting the third dimension. Let's say that you have taken a chocolate. So you have taken a chocolate in the form of a square in which you are neglecting the third dimension, which is the height of the chocolate. And you need to distribute it among people. And what are the total number of cuts that you can make on that chocolate? Let's say somebody has already said that you cannot make more than four chocolates. Otherwise, it goes for a toss. So what are the, the total number of pieces that can be given rise to out of the four cuts that you can make on this square chocolate? So what do you need to do in that case? You just need to consider these four cases that we have already taken. This is the first case. This is the second case you would take and this is the third case you would take. In that case, you would say that I can get five pieces also. I can get eight pieces also and I can get nine pieces also. Can you get any other count of pieces if you were supposed to make the cuts parallel to the sides? Or you were supposed to make cuts in a maximum of two directions? No. So either you could have given the chop, you could have distributed the pieces of that chocolate into five. In in five, I mean, in, you could have given it to five friends, or you could have given it to eight friends, or you could have given it to nine friends. Right? I hope you have understood this. And then, when we take this discussion to the next level, is when we would talk about three-dimensional figures. In this case. The only thing that we would have kept as a constant here is we were talking about two dimensions and both two dimensions were perpendicular to each other.